Today I'm going to show you how to upgrade your server to the latest version of Plesk. Uh, this is Plesk 12 at the time I'm recording this video. To be precise, I'm going to show you how to upgrade your current Plesk 11.5.30 to Plesk 12.0.18. If your version numbers differ there slightly, don't worry about it. The interface might have changed a little bit like the graphical user interface, but the principles still apply and the principles are still the same. I'm running a server that is built on CentOS 6.5 at the time of recording. That's important because I'm going to cover how to upgrade that as well. In fact, we need to do that before we upgrade Plesk. If your server is running a different flavor of Linux or you're running Windows, then I'm afraid I won't be able to help you because I'm not, I'm not so sufficient on those systems. But uh, the upgrade process will be very similar. It's just the way that you upgrade the operating system packages that will be very different. In this video, we're going to cover how to perform a so-called in-place upgrade. That is one that you apply to the machine that the current version of Plesk gets installed on. And you basically click a button and upgrade the system. It's synonymous with upgrading your Mountain Lion to Mavericks or your Windows 7 machine to Windows 8.1. There is a different way of upgrading a server and that is a so-called migration to a different server. And I'm mentioning this here, uh, we're not covering that here, but I'm mentioning this here because that is a method in which you will not incur any downtime. We are performing an in-place upgrade, which means that the server will occasionally go down when new services are installed and system services are restarted, including the Plesk PSA service. I'm only mentioning that here, it's not because your server is going to go down for half an hour or so, we're talking seconds to minutes tops, but it is something to be aware of and if you have tight SLA agreements then you may not be able to do that. We are literally talking seconds to minutes of inconsistent behavior, which for the average user at 3 o'clock in the morning isn't usually a problem, just something to be aware of. Before we begin, there's always a chance that when your server comes back from a backup that nothing works anymore and you won't be able to make it work. This is the worst case scenario, of course, but it's something that can happen and I believe we've all been in that same situation before. So one thing that I'd like to remind you of is to back up important data to another machine, just so that in case you have to rebuild the server from scratch, you have data that you can go back to. And if it's not six months outdated, you know, that's a massive bonus. So make a backup of your data before you even start the upgrade process. Plesk has a nice service there. This is the backup manager, which allows you to make a server-wide or subscription-wide backup to an FTP repository on a different machine. That's very important, a different machine. I've had clients who go, hey, I've got FTP credentials. Why can't I use that for backup? Well, because it's making the backup on the same server. Obviously, that's not the point. If the server goes down, that backup will also be wiped out. Not so good. If you're running a virtual instance of a server, then you can also use a snapshot feature. That is not something that Plesk provides, that's something that your hosting provider or your server provider will provide, and that lets you create an image of the server as it is right now. Then you can go and upgrade, and if something goes wrong, well, you can always restore that snapshot. Something to be aware of, of course, that usually creating such a snapshot will also incur some downtime on the server, which is usually uh, not negligible. One other thing that I'd like you to remember is that if this FTP business is a bit too much for you, you think, hey, I'm just going to make a local backup to the server and just rsync it across, then at least it's in a safe position that way. Do not do that. Do not go make a local backup and rsync it to another machine. The reason for this is a security feature that's built into Plesk and that will prevent you from restoring something that, you, that was supposed to be a local backup on a server that is not the current server. Uh, this, this works with a security key. If you rebuild the server, you're basically starting from scratch. So even if it's the same server with a new image of Plesk, a brand new image, then that ex-local backup won't be able to be restored on that server. Only FTP backups can be restored on different machines. Okay, enough about backups. I'm not going to cover that here. There will be another video in which I'm going to go into that in more detail. Right now, let's get started upgrading Plesk on CentOS 6.5. Let me quickly show you my setup here. This is the Plesk instance in question. That's currently Plesk 11.5. Uh, I've got that open in one tab of my Safari browser here. I'm doing this on a Mac, in case you're wondering. And on the 
other tab here, I've got my SSH session open in which I'm logged in as root to my server already. Let's go back just so if I'm switching between those, then you know, this is the web browser, the other one is the SSH session. So let's log in here. And on some systems, you can see right in the home section here under system overview, you sometimes see a little tab that says, hey, there's a new version available, would you like to install it? And you can go and go there straight from this tab here. This system overview window is kind of nice. It tells you what the uh, what your server's called, the IP address, and what you're currently running. So I'm using Plesk 11.5.30 micro update 47. These are usually applied automatically as long as Parallels support that current version of Plesk and it tells you when it was last updated. So this is when my server checked himself what was available in regards to updates. I don't see that little upgrade message here. That's fine. You know, it's kind of system dependent. Some systems show it, some systems don't. But before we want to go ahead and update Plesk, let's update the operating system. That's also open source. So, you know, let's switch to the SSH session. And let's see what happens if I type yum update. There we go, lots of packages here that should be updated before we go ahead. It's not mandatory, but you know, while you're updating, you might as well update the entire server. So let's do that, type yes. Grab a coffee because this will take some time. Don't do anything with the Plesk interface while the server is updating the operating system. If you're using a different flavor of Linux, such as Debian or Ubuntu, then you'll probably use the apt package installer. And if you're running Windows, well, that's an entirely different issue altogether. And you probably know better how to update Windows than I do. Upgrading the entire server, by the way, including the operating system and Plesk, will take anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes, in which the server is not completely down, but system services will frequently restart themselves. So your users may experience inconsistent results. For a matter of seconds, we're saying, you know, this is not the server is going to be down for five or ten minutes in one block, but it will go up and down every so often. So nothing much to worry about there. Great, looks like Yum was successful in updating the operating system. Now let's go back to Plesk and update Plesk to the latest version. If you're lucky enough to have that message down here, just click it and you will be taken straight to the updater. If you don't, well, fret not, just head over here to Tools and Settings in Service Provider View. If you don't have Service Provider View and you're using the Power User View, you will have a tab up here that's called Server. And that is the equivalent to just clicking Tools and Settings. So you will get a similar menu or pretty much the same menu as this. As we said earlier, it's important to make a backup, so we'll quickly do that here, just as a refresher in case you've forgotten where that option is. Under Tools and Resources, you will find the Backup Manager. Click it and just create a backup, a server-wide backup. You'll have a similar menu in each subscription. Make sure it's gone to the FTP and make sure it has the server configuration and content. That'll kick off the backup and it'll take a couple of minutes for it to finish. You can always click this tab here, Current Backup Tasks, and click Refresh if necessary. This was a small backup and a fast line, I guess. So just make sure that under Personal FTP Repository, your backup shows up. And here it is. I didn't really have a lot here, but sometimes it's several gigabytes in size, so that can take a moment or so. Wait until this is finished and then proceed to upgrading Plesk. If you have any questions about making FTP backups or any kinds of backups with Plesk, there's another video that I've made that goes into this in more detail. Head over back to Tools and Settings or the Server tab if you're using Power User Mode and under the Panel section, find Updates and Upgrades. Click that and a new tab will open in your web browser. It's the same one that allows you to add or remove Plesk components, update the current ones, or in fact upgrade to the latest version of Plesk. You can find out more details about this latest version of Plesk, which is shown here. Just click Details, or just head over to Install or Upgrade Product. And when you do that, you get to a little drop-down menu here, which may show you several new versions of Plesk. We only have one, and we would like to continue.
Sometimes before you go into this dialog, you will see something similar to this yellow window here, not this exact one, but uh, one that will tell you for a few seconds that the updater is being synced with the latest version. Well, that happens automatically. Just leave it there until you get to the screen that I've just shown you. Plesk sometimes may remind you that, hey, uh, updating is not such a good idea because there's something wrong here and I'm not entirely convinced what this is. Um, you can have a look at this error message. I, I know what this is about. This is fine. I'm just going to confirm. I'm happy to go ahead and hit continue. But at this point, it's a good idea if you don't know what this error message is, just research it and see you know, if you can safely ignore it or if it's something you should research. And then Ples goes ahead and goes to work with the update. This text that you see here in this gray window, that is what you would see on the command line if you would use the command line updater. I've chosen the web interface because it's much nicer and easier to access, uh, but this gray window keeps you abreast of anything that Plesk tells you on the command line that it's currently doing. This process, depending on the speed of your server and the speed of your network connection, can take about 10 to 20 minutes. So, you know, Keep the window open, of course, um, and grab a coffee. If you accidentally close it, I don't think that's a massive issue because the updater works in the background. But, you know, don't rush things. Just grab a coffee and watch what happens. If you see messages like this, stopping PSA and starting PSA, this all means that currently the Plesk service and all the system services are being restarted and this is the only downtime that you'll actually incur. So the two seconds that PSA was down, that is your actual server downtime. As soon as these services start back up, your server is back up and running. If you see error messages like this, shell init error retrieving current directory, there's not much to worry about. It's just uh, more like an info message. This is not anything that where the server or where the upgrade script is saying, hey, something was major trouble here. It's just something to note, but you know, not get nervous about. Now that the upgrade is finished, Plesk is going to apply micro updates here. So any references to micro updates forward slash mu and a number, those are micro updates that parallels release every other week or every week or so to keep products up to date. Those are quick security patches that don't require the entire product to be updated, but they happen automatically. And once you upgrade to the latest version, then it's basically at micro update zero, and anything that's been released after that gets applied automatically. And that's it. This is a success window I was talking about. All operations with products and components have been successfully completed. That is good news. What you can do now is click OK, and that will take you back to the Install and Update Powers Products window. You can now safely close this, and back in your Plesk admin interface, that session is no longer valid, so if you click on Home, then you will notice that Plesk has logged you out. Slightly darker background here, that's good news. That means we are probably, hopefully successfully, running Plesk 12. And we are indeed. I can see the interface as I'm expecting it. I can click everything. Look at all these little new things. Woo! Exciting! So have a look at the WordPress toolkit and all the other exciting things that Parallels have put into Plesk 12 for us. Speaking of the WordPress toolkit here, not specifically about it, there's another video that will cover that in more detail. If you're missing certain features from Plus 12, which you had expected to be there, then that may be because you've upgraded and the licenses, the license editions in Plesk have changed. There are now four different editions of Plus 12, and you can consult the Parallels website to find out more about that. If you had previously a license that was not covered by these. Now Plesk 12 may have grandfathered you in or slotted you into something that you weren't before. So uh, one and one, for example, had the 10 domain license. So you're going to be automatically updated to the Plesk admin edition, which does not have the WordPress toolkit, for example. Or you're going to be grandfathered into the web app edition. So it kind of depends on what you had before. So let's have a quick look at what we did here today. First of all, we backed up all our data to another machine, or we took a snapshot, however we did it, we secured our data so that in case something went wrong, we can always bring our server back to the state in which it is right now. Then we updated the operating system. In my case, that was CentOS or Red Hat. Upgrading that is as simple as typing yum update on the command line. If you're using a different flavor of Linux or you're using Windows, then the upgrade process of the operating system will be slightly different. 
Then we went ahead and updated Plesk to the latest version and we watched the upgrade process in the second tab that opened there and uh, read the log files. If everything went well, Plesk will prompt us to log in again and in that case we can verify our project. So if you're hosting websites, if you're hosting email, see if those things have come back. If the Plesk interface is a little bit erratic or if you're seeing some spurious messages and it doesn't quite behave the way you wanted it to, just go and restart your server and see what happens. That usually eradicates all the problems that you've had. I hope this was helpful. If you have any comments about this video, please don't hesitate to leave some. And if it was, of course, if it was helpful, then please share this video with friends, family and total strangers. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.